Google earnings are out, or Alphabet, the parent company of Google, they just reported earnings, and the stock is up. Stock is up 2.69% after hours. That's despite, looks like missing on both earnings and revenue for the second quarter. Look at this. The company reported earnings per share of $1.21 versus $1.28, so missed slightly. The company also fell short on revenue expectations for advertising and Google Cloud. Google shares have lost about a quarter of their value this year. Yes, I know they have. My gosh, earnings per share. Earnings per share. So a slight miss, $1.21 versus $1.28. Not too bad. I think some investors are going to freak out. Some investors naturally when they, they see a miss, when they see the, the scary headline about missed earnings on the quarter, not living up to expectations. They think this is highly negative. To be quite honest with you, after the, the Snapchat declines, after the massive miss we saw for Snapchat and the, the massive impact on the stock that had, I think investors are relieved to only see a slight miss in the marketplace. And that's actually being reflected by how the stock's performing right now, up after hours. Other segments, other segments again, weren't too bad. Revenue of 69.69 billion versus 69.9 expected. Again, not too bad, a slight miss in terms of revenue. YouTube advertising revenue, slightly down. I thought that would have more of a decline. I thought given the declining ad rates recently, we'd actually be seeing a large decline. But again, only a slight miss there. 7.34 billion versus 7.52 billion. Google Cloud, Google Cloud did miss expectations by a fair margin here. They missed what was our expected revenue. It was expected of 6.41 billion and yet only produced 6.28 billion, which again is okay. Traffic acquisition cost, TAC, you know, not too bad either. They were actually lower than expected, which is, you know, a beat positive in terms of the, the cost of acquisition. Revenue goes slow to 13% in the quarter from 62% in a year earlier. Let's be quite honest here. Did we expect revenue growth for Google to remain at 62%? Not at all, especially with the recessionary pressures on the rise and especially with the inflationary pressures on the marketplace and less advertising being done by large scale institutions, naturally the growth rate wasn't going to be as high. I still think 13% in the environment in which we're operating is still actually pretty impressive. We saw advertising revenue increase just 12% from 56.3 billion. Uh, as Mark has reeled from their spending, yes, again, inflationary pressures, reducing their spending in the marketplace. The most notable deceleration was in the YouTube division, where sales rose only 5% after jumping 84% in the same period a year ago. Yes, we know over the past two years, there has been an absolute explosion in YouTube revenue, up 84%. In the same period last year, again, were we really expecting massive consistent growth for the segment? Not really. I think over the long term, we're going to see consistent growth. I think over the long term, a growth rate of 10, 15% for YouTube over long term isn't outrageous. I think that's absolutely achievable. Do I think 84% is going to occur again? Not really. But nor do I think we're going to be seeing as low as 5% going forward in the next decade. And again, they mention the Snapchat earnings here. The report comes days after Snap announced disastrous quarterly results. And we've seen this time and time again. Typically, Snapchat reports before Google and before Meta. And whenever they're reporting before those companies, naturally they'll underperform. I think we've seen this twice this year, if not over the past few quarters. And naturally that impacts Google stock. We saw Google fall 5 6% on the day that Snap reported earnings. And yet today, when we actually have the reality of Google's earnings, the stock is up after hours. I think that's the reality of this marketplace. So fear and you, so making arbitrage bets based upon what other is happening with other companies. Just look at the company you own. Just look at the reality of the business you own. To me, Snap and Google slash Alphabet are on completely different levels. The quality of the advertising service, the access to customers worldwide provided by Google relative to Snap, there's no comparison. And so when people, I see people freaking out about uh, selling down the stock because Snap underperformed, I think it's been a reasonable bit silly. Revenue in the other bet segment, which in includes self-driving car unit Waymo, as well as some healthcare startups, again, their, their venture capital arm, rose by 1 million from a year ago to 193 million. It lost 1.69 billion during the quarter. It's understandable. Other bets, we know they're going to make losses. Google Cloud, this is one I'm a little bit concerned about. Google Cloud fell short of revenue expectations, lost 858 million. We know they're operating at a loss. That's okay. The cloud division is trying to take share from Amazon Web Services and of course, Microsoft Azure, the two top players in the market. Microsoft said on Tuesday that revenue from Azure and other cloud services grew 40% in the period. So Microsoft's killing it again. Microsoft, wonderful company. I can't deny that that's absolutely fine. Google making strides to catch up, still at a loss, but think about it. Once that cloud division becomes profitable, think about the earnings growth that's going to occur. Think about the earnings accretion that can occur. Think about how Azure, 
completely transform Microsoft's business. I think Google Cloud not as larger impact on Google's business, but it can have an impact all the same and will contribute to a large degree of growth going forward. Alphabet said its headcount rose by 21%. That's fairly appealing. You know, we've seen a lot of companies cutting their headcount. You know, layoffs and Tesla, I believe. Alphabet, they're still employing. There's still free cash flow there. They still have the that wide economic moat, that massive war chest of cash that we talk about so often, allowing them to make those employments, allowing them to increase those staff numbers. Very, very positive. Full-time employees from 144,000 up to 174,000. So this is all fairly positive. Yes, Snap underperformed. Yes, Snap freaked out the marketplace. But by and large, despite the misses, I'm still fairly attracted to the company. I still like what's going on inside Alphabet. And the market clearly does too. After hours, we'll just refresh that again. What are we up? Up 2.74%. Fairly good. And on a fundamental level, yes, we'll, we'll see the impact on the valuation. You saw that revenue growth figure. That revenue growth figure of, I think it was 13, 12%. Fact of the matter is, based upon the current trading price, trading price of only $105, to get a fair price for Google over the course of the next decade, you only need a price in about 10% growth. With that 13% growth rate, you're actually getting about a 20% discount from your intrinsic value. And I think that 13% growth rate is a little low relative to what they could achieve over the long term. I think 16, 17% more reasonable. But you know, if you want to be conservative, put in that 13%, you're still getting about a 20% discount rate from their current valuation. And by, and by the way, that's just revenue growth. Think about earnings growth. Think about the earnings growth that can take place once the cloud division comes to profitability. Yes, some people will be freaking out. Yes, some people will be saying, oh, you're wrong, Lockie. They, they missed on earnings. You know, they're not doing too well. Fact of the matter is, numbers aren't too disappointing. Relative to what people expected to happen, nowhere near as bad. Absolutely fine. The growth rates currently even pricing in the growth that took place this quarter, you're still getting a fairly large discount to your intrinsic value. Still a world-class company. Still, in my opinion, one of the best buys in the market right now. A lot of people get skeptical when they see these type of scary headlines. I encourage you not to. So much of the marketplace over the past few months has been predicated upon this type of sentiment, this type of negative rhetoric around companies, the scary headlines forcing people to sell in the retail community. Don't buy into it. When you see these headlines, whether it be positive or whether it be negative, actually look at the company. Actually analyze the business. Take a minute to step back and say, okay, what's actually going on in the business? What's actually occurring within this equity? Because if you can do that... It's like a superpower in the stock market. It gives you the ability to assess companies rationally, to focus on businesses, not with emotion, but instead with discipline, with focus, and a focus on the long term more so than anything. Do that over time. Do that consistently. I think that's how you do well. I think that's how you outperform for a prolonged period within the stock market. Now, earnings, my thoughts, you know, I think fairly good. Yes, they missed, but by and large, not as disappointing as it could have been. And my buyer of Google, absolutely still, I think it's tremendously undervalued based upon the current trading price. So of course, if you enjoyed this video, please drop us a like down below. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company or topic you want to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below. would love to hear your thoughts. But until then, thank you. I'll see you in the next one.